now we come to rotator cuff tears which is the commonest indication for a rotator uh, for a shoulder ultrasound so ultrasound has good accuracy in detection of tears as good as mr when you do a dynamic evaluation you can actually see certain tears better especially partial thickness tears and subtle tears supraspinatus is the most commonly involved tendon and anterior half is the commonest location what we are supposed to see is the size and location of the tear location from the bursal or the articular surface the amount of retraction status of the muscles and telling the surgeon that yes this is at so much uh, distance from the rotator interval if they are planning an arthroscopic repair so partial thickness tears articular te surface tear is the most common the bursal surface tears are lesser common and interstitial tears are usually asymptomatic and incidentally detected so this is the first case of a partial thickness tear with shoulder pain and weak abduction so here what you see here is fraying of the articular surface fibers there in the short axis radius reduction of the height of the tendon that's the biceps the infraspinatus and that's the supra in the short axis showing the subtle articular surface tear going along the articular cartilage then you have the bursal surface tear because this is the subdeltoid bursa and it's a high grade because it's involving almost two thirds the thickness of the tendon and then you have the last variety of tear and you see this thin hypoechoic line going into the substance from the footprint this is the interstitial tear so that's how we grade partial and uh, partial thickness tears when it's involving less the less than half the tendon thickness it's a low grade if it's involving around half the tendon thickness it's medium grade and more than half the tendon thickness it's a uh, high grade so ultrasound and mr are almost comparable in detection of partial thickness rotator cuff tears MRA is obviously more accurate, but nowadays nobody does MRA just for detection of tears. So delaminating tears are the interstitial tears which extend to the bursal or the articular surfaces, and sometimes they form an intramuscular cyst. Rim rent tears are those ones which extend from the articular surface of the supraspinatus tendon into the footprint, and these are commonly seen in young patients and overhead throwing athletes. So that's how a rim rent tear will look. extending from the articular surface to the footprint this is in the long axis you see that stepping artifact with typical supraspinatus facet short axis and that's in, again in the long axis then we come to full thickness so rotator cuff is like a barrier it's like a wall between the subdeltoid bursa and the glenohumeral recess the moment there is a breach in that barrier you see a cleft or a tear going from the bursal to the articular surface that is labeled as a full thickness tear now a full thickness tear can involve only a small portion of the tendon half the width of the tendon or full width of the tendon and when full width of the tendon is involved you get a significant retraction so smaller ones are less than a centimeter medium ones are more than 1 to 3 cm and when you have more than two tendons or more than one tendon involved for example here you have the you don't have any supra or infraspinatus tendon seen at the tuberosity and you just see the deltoid lying over the naked tuberosity so here you should not mistake deltoid for the cuff and here you don't see any cuff at all so it's a massive tear and that's when you have significant chronic retractions and atrophies of the rotator cuff muscles so how do we grade retraction when it's a tear which is recent you see a grade 1 retraction where the torn tendon is located just distal to the articular cartilage if it's located on the humeral head over the articular cartilage that's a grade 2 tear and then when it goes further beyond underneath the acromion it's a grade 3 tear so this is how when you report you kind of tell the surgeon that it's a partial thickness tear at various surfaces or an interstitial tear and if it's a full thickness tear whether it's involving the full width or some portion of the tendon and the distance of the tear from the rotator interval when there is a massive tear 
the inferior acromioclavicular joint capsule gets eroded the humerus continuously hits hitting underneath the uh, acromioclavicular joint and that's the place when through the rent the joint fluid comes out and pops out like a ganglion over the ac joint giving rise to a geyser sign